markets and how they fluctuate shouldn't dictate your income if you're invested properly. Why notes? Why would I buy debt on property instead of property itself? You can absolutely find very low risk, high yielding investments that go on to create not only income, but also wealth. I receive passive monthly income like a bank. Be your own bank. You're not a landlord. We're the note owner, so we don't deal with the tenants. We don't deal with any management of the property, the maintenance of the property, and all the headings that come with it. Welcome everybody to the Wealth Wednesday webinar. I'm Shauna um, here standing in for Chris and Steven this week. They're at a conference at One America. Uh, so sharpening the saw, as we say, with one of our insurance carriers and one of our trusted um, partners. And so we've got a special guest in today, Mr. Kevin Shortell, who is very knowledgeable in the note investing world. Probably, I think the top coach is, is the title that you have, many awards, and you have you know books and all those things. So Kevin just was at our most recent three-day Money School Essentials. He's at our in-person events, like the experience, and then like the private money club money tank coming up in Charlotte, North Carolina. I know he'll be there. Right. So he's um, going to stand in for Chris and Steven today and teach us all um, what we can do with our banking money, right? So this is exactly. a great strategy for after your bank is maybe developed. Exactly. Okay. You got it. Well, it away, welcome. Kevin. Thanks, Shauna. I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. And she's absolutely correct, as always. So welcome to the Wealth Webinar. And again, if you logged on before uh, we hit record, um, she mentioned that I'm a, a guest hosting today. And, you know, I've, I've been working with <clears throat> Chris and his whole team for quite a number of years now. It's just been a great uh, relationship that we've built because I am one of the people for sure that uh, when people start to build these infinite banking accounts, they go, where do we invest it? Where can we get our best return? Where can we get a safe return? Uh, because I know part of the, the techniques that he teaches, and rightfully so, is when you borrow money from your account and you invest it or you purchase something, you want to pay that money back, right? It's, it's a repetitive process on there. So you have to think in terms of where can I invest this to get the best returns? And above and beyond the infinite banking, Chris and his team are always talking about the techniques that wealthy investors use. I mean, we are our education in the United States on money and wealth building is woefully uh, lacking. I mean, we're just not taught that in schools. We're not taught that really for the most part. At least I wasn't from from my parents. Um, it's just it's it's lacking and it's pretty obvious. Yet the wealthy families go on and they build trust, you know, and they they have these techniques to avoid taxes and they invest differently than a regular person does. I think that was pretty darn easy to prove. So how do we use the techniques of the wealthy? Because Chris, as he always says, they are available to all of us. It's just our lack of understanding, our lack of knowledge within these investment categories, some of which you might be exposed to something today that you've just never heard of. It's a foreign thing to you, yet it's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry that's been going on forever, but it's been exclusively pretty much for the wealthy people. And, and I've been an advocate for uh, in teaching this for over 25 years and bringing this technique, bringing this uh, not only technique, but this investment category to more and more people and exposing it to them so they can get the same benefits that wealthy people do. So it's all combined into one. That's what the Wealth Webinar is all about. So in a transition then for today, we're going to talk about what do we do with inf infinite banking? How do we get that into investments? And most of you, most of you will look at what falls into the category of alternative investments. Okay, now that's a very broad category um, and can have many definitions to it, but I think most of you will fall into that because again, most of what wealthy people do, wealthy family do's are in these alternative investments. They're not in the mainstream investments that most people are 
are utilizing because that doesn't make you money. Uh, that doesn't create income. It doesn't uh, create wealth, which are two different things, of course, by the way. So that's what we're going to focus on today, infinite banking into these alternative investments. And I think all of you should strongly consider Real estate notes, the topic we're going to talk about, and I'll fully define that for you today. I'll give you uh, actual case studies from, from people at Money School who are doing these deals under my tutelage, under my mentorship, if you will. And you may even want to jot this information down now. you got my email and you've got my Calendly link there because at the end of this, you may want to go ahead and schedule a phone call with me, which I'm offering, you know, at free, no cost, 30 minutes. Let's talk. Let's see if you learned something. Let's see if you this is something that you want to pursue and how I might be able to help you as well. So I'm going to go through all of this, and I'm even going to show you an opportunity at the end of, of this that you may want to take advantage of. So I titled this one, How to Banks. And wealthy investors like Warren Buffett and Robert Kiyosaki invest in real estate. It's not the way traditional investors invest in real estate. Now, I brought out those two uh, because Warren Buffett is one of the largest investors, if not the largest investor in the world in this in this field. But Robert Kiyosaki was never talking about this particular niche in real estate. He was more traditional. And if you've been following him through, through his books over the years, he made a switch into adding in this real estate note technique that we're going to be talking about today. So those are two high profile investors, but certainly wealthy families have been doing this. Institutions, not only banks, but non-bank institutions invest in this category of real estate, but under a completely different premise of what most people are familiar with. What they invest in, in the most simple term that I can put it, is they invest in debt. Okay, there's a difference in all investments between equity and debt. So for example, when Warren Buffett is investing or you're investing in the stock market and you're buying stock in a company, you are taking an equity position. You're a part owner of that company. Okay, he comes in at a much bigger part owner than, than you probably come, come in at. So when we're buying stocks and things like that, you're buying into the ownership and the, and the equity. When you buy a house, you're buying into the equity, hopefully that is developed in that property by the increase in value as well as paying down the debt. That's how you establish equity in that. The alternative investment world, which some people do simultaneously or modify that in the open marketplace, is the debt side of the business. So again, if we go back to the stock market, like Warren Buffett, who's more famous for that than he is for this particular niche, when Warren Buffett buys bonds, bonds are debt, okay? So uh, that's the debt side of it. Whether the, the uh, guarantor is the government, if you buy a treasury bond, you're buying debt, uh, and the uh, the treasury is going to you know, bond the full faith of the United States is going to pay you back on that uh, on that bond. You're on the debt side of of things. In the note space in real estate, that's what we buy. I don't buy real estate anymore. I buy the debt on the real estate. Why? Because if you look at every city across the United States, who has the biggest buildings? It's the banks. Do banks buy more real estate or do banks buy more debt on the real estate? They have more debt on the real estate. That's the game that they're in. And they're in the biggest buildings in every city in the United States. Las Vegas is probably the exception, right? Where the banks are called casinos. Uh, but you get my point there. And the other interesting thing with debt versus equity, when things go wrong, and if you've been listening to Chris for a while, he's very on top of the statistics. He's very on top of what may happen in the future. And it doesn't look that pretty. Okay, in many scenarios. And are you prepared for that? And if things go wrong, who gets paid off first, the debt owners or the equity owners? The answer is the debt owners always get paid off first, not the equity owners. In fact, if you owned a property back in the last crash, you saw your equity disappear, but you still owed that debt, right? So you either paid that debt or and are still paying that debt or modified that debt or the property was given up as collateral. The debtors get paid first. So keep that in mind as we go through the, uh, these scenarios. So a lot of parallels between those, those two things. And you'll hear Chris talk more about uh, the economy as, as we go on. And he'll be back next week, uh, by the way, um, to continue on with this, uh, this series.
Okay, so why notes? Why would I buy debt on property instead of property itself? Well, historically, I moved into that role. When I first started after graduating college, I got into real estate. I always had a passion before, at least I felt I had a passion for real estate, never bought any. But once I graduated college, I said, I'm getting into real estate. And I wanted to be a real estate investor because I'd read all the books on how you could make millions of dollars by buying these properties and such. And that's what I tried to do. Well, coming out of college, I wasn't making a whole lot a whole lot of money, uh, obviously. And, and, and uh, I was starting to do that. But I figured, well, if I'm going to be in real estate, might as well get my real estate license. And I became a real estate appraiser. And that gave me the ability to understand the value of property, how to do research uh, on, on properties. And those are skills that are transferable in the note business today, uh, by the way. And uh, I ended up buying my first investment property and getting started in that. And I went on to buy probably 150 properties, renovated them, resold them, that sort of thing. And, you know, at some point in time, I, it was just... This is a lot of work. This is a heck of a lot of effort. It's a full-time investment when you're doing that because we I was buying with a partner probably 60 homes a year, which is a lot to take on. And I just got burnt out. I got to a point, I'm like, man, I, I can't do that. I can't deal with the tenants. I can't deal with the property, you know, the seller. It just, it just became a nightmare. So I got into money lending. I started doing some money lending. And um, the same thing, it's an active process on that. And I went back to something I learned a long time ago, which was notes. So I started putting together a list and I said, look, I don't want to go out and look at properties anymore. Now, if you enjoy doing that, fine, fantastic. Keep doing it. Do whatever your passion is, but be open to other opportunities that you might want to add on, bolt on, if you will, to what you're currently uh, doing. Because when you learn new skills, it does open up more opportunities and as I always say with my, my lucky cap uh, here that I, I wear these all the time, is luck is the intersection of opportunity and preparedness. You know, so opportunity is always there. It's just, are you prepared? And it's amazing when you're prepared, you see more opportunities. So uh, make sure you keep your eyes open to that. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go out and bid, bid at live auctions anymore, very cutthroat. I didn't want to take on a lot of debt to buy expensive property uh, anymore because the last crash saw what can happen to all of those things. I don't want to deal with contractors and handymen anymore. Don't want to deal with tenants. Don't want to work hard uh, anymore. And I, I, I don't want to have to market, you know, get in marketing business to find to find deals. So I started making a list of what I didn't want to do. And then I said, okay, what do I, I want to do in this? And some of you, I think, are, will be right on me with this list here. I do want passive income. What can I do where I'm making money while I'm sleeping? You know, what can I do with very little effort up front that continues to pay residuals for a long period of time? That's what I prefer versus having to go out, buy properties, fix them up, rent them, fix them up, sell them, and be very, very active on that. I wanted something that was much more passive and I wanted low risk. Okay. When I was younger, sure, I'd take on, on, on more risk. But, you know, you start having a family, you start getting a little bit older, and all of a sudden you go, I have to not only grow my wealth, but I also have to protect it. And everything I do is look at risk first. And in the note business, you can absolutely find very low risk, high yielding investments that go on to create not only income, but also wealth. And again, there is a difference between income and wealth. You know, if somebody's making $200,000 a year, by most people's standard, you would say they're making a very good income. Uh, but if they're living paycheck to paycheck and they're just living on a higher level and a higher debt level, they're not creating wealth. So there is a difference between the two of those. Uh, notes can do both. I do want an investment that I can do from anywhere. Uh, the age of uh, technology, you know, uh, Shauna mentioned I did the last, uh, I spoke uh, for an hour and a half, I think 90 minutes on the last three day event that they did. And we were out on vacation in, in Lake Tahoe. And it was just absolutely great. I had my laptop. I could I could do all of that from there. I can invest in notes from there. I can close deals. I was still consulting on vacation uh, a couple of times because I had clients in the middle of, of doing deals. No problem. As long as you have a computer and access to the internet, you can do this business because we're not driving around looking at property. We're not uh, um, you know, driving and spending all that money on gas and everything else to look at 50 properties or 100 properties to buy 10 to make two offers. None of that sort of stuff anymore. Um, I do want an investment that works in good and bad economies. I've been around long enough you know, where 
you do see cycles and you do see things. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's true. Wisdom comes, uh, you know, uh, with, with age. Uh, sometimes you just have to experience because I, I certainly remember times where you just saw the good times never ending and then they do, and then you have to recover. And how do you recover? How do you position yourself? And when you've been through cycles like that, which some of you have on this, on this session, some of you may not have, we do have to prepare for that. And that's one of the things that Chris is doing right now is really prepping people for it could be bad. It could be really bad. Um, so how do we position ourselves to, again, cr continue to create income and wealth, but also protect what we, what we have in this industry that I'm going to be delving into in detail with you is prepared absolutely for both of those scenarios, because we have great opportunities right now. And in, in, in fine times, uh, we have even better opportunities in bad times which might sound a little strange, but hang in there with me today and we will make sure that uh, you see that for yourselves. So bottom line is this, markets and how they fluctuate shouldn't dictate your income if you're invested properly. It might change within certain ranges, but your outcome, income, uh, the, you know, the, the income that you're making, the wealth that you're creating, markets shouldn't di dictate all of that, but it should make you think about your strategies. Okay, what techniques were you using or what investments were you using last year? They may not work next year. That doesn't mean you're shifting outside of complete industries, although it may. But again, when you think in terms of, of the stock market, you know, what's what control do you have there? You know, what what insight do you have that that others don't don't have? You know, and that might change your outcome when you invest in alternative investments, you're going to find that you have more control and you can shift within those alternative investments. For example, in the note business, if I were to break it down, we're buying debt on property. So when we buy debt on property, what does that debt look like? Well, it can fall under the category of performing. So if I buy a performing note, that means somebody's making their monthly payments on a regular basis. Great. If I buy the type of debt that is categorized under non-performing, okay, under non-performing, that means they're not making their monthly payments. Okay. Is that still something that I can buy? Well, sure. It comes down to price and value. It always does, right? Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. What's backing that non-performing note? What's a likely income on that? So in our industry, what we'll shift to right now, the bulk of our industry is performing notes. But if that changes because the economy, the market changes, we'll have more non-performing notes. And then all I do is shift more from por uh, uh, my portfolio from performing notes into non-performing notes. Okay. And we just buy them at a deeper, uh, deeper discount. And that's how overall it works. So, to obtain financial freedom, speaking of uh, Robert Kiyosaki, one must either be a business owner, an investor, or both generating a passive income, particularly on a monthly basis. I love that statement by him. I, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me whether you like his philosophy on, on uh, financial information or not, but I think this is hard to argue against, right? The, to obtain the financial freedom, one must either have a, be a business owner, an investor, or both generating passive income. That is essentially the definition of the note business because it is a business. You can treat it as a business. Some people go into full-time, some go into a part-time, but you're also an investor uh, in these assets and they generate passive monthly income on a regular basis. So a uh, very definition of that. And Warren Buffett, um, who owns, by the way, he buys and creates the most paper on mobile and manufactured homes. That's where he found his niche in this in this industry. He's the biggest uh, by by far. Uh, if you don't find a way to make money when you sleep, you'll work until you die. So something to think about there, making money while you're sleeping. Okay, getting into breaking this down. I keep talking about notes. What are what are notes? You can think of a note as an IOU, right? IOU is a debt. And we deal in IOUs on a regular basis. You know, it, it's very simple. In fact, you deal with notes on a regular basis because what is a note? There's a simple note for you. A person is borrowing money from another person. They're agreeing to pay it back. They're agreeing to pay uh, an interest rate on top of that. And that's it. That's a simple note. We deal in those all the time. In fact, every time you write a check, and I know we don't write much, many uh, checks these days, but uh, when you write a check to somebody, isn't that a form of a note? Isn't it a promise to pay a certain amount? Of course it is. Okay. Of course it is. 
And, you know, you could write somebody a check or you could receive a check. And are you at risk for that becoming a non-performing note? <laughs> you could get that too, right? Uh, that's uh, That would be insufficient funds, right? So a simple note is just that. There's a promise between a borrower and a lender for a certain amount of money and a certain interest rate in a certain period of time. That's it. We deal in these things all the time. So nothing is, is complicated here at all. Now, we don't buy notes just like that because if the note does go bad, we don't really have any collateral other than suing the person and getting a judgment. And if you sue a person and get a judgment, it doesn't mean that you're walking out of the courtroom with money, okay? It means you're walking out of the courtroom with a judgment. Part one, part two is collecting on that judgment. So we don't want to deal with that in the note business. So we buy secured notes. So what are secured notes? These are the same simple thing, the same IOU, borrower, lender, interest rate, time frame, amount borrowed, but it's secured by collateral. And the collateral is the property. In other words, if you don't pay the debt, then we get the property. That's the arrangement, okay? So that's what brings in the security mechanism of this, because if we can evaluate the property, if you've got a $100,000 property and uh, they have a $30,000 loan on that and you're buying that loan for $25,000, if they don't pay, your $25,000 investment's backed by a $100,000 loan. That's the safety. Okay, that's the safety. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. All right. So the loans that we buy are a combination of the note, the IOU, and the security agreement. The security agreement in the real estate business is mortgages. Okay, very simple. That's, that's what it is. Security agreements can, can change. I used to buy lottery winnings. Lottery winnings are secured by the, the state. I used to buy casino winnings, secured by the, uh, the casino. I used to buy professional athlete contracts, secured by uh, the NFL team, whatever, whatever it was. So there's all kinds of these instruments, but the most popular, the easiest to buy, the easiest to understand, the easiest to value are real estate notes. So it comes down to the same concept. We're buying a note backed by a security agreement, in this case called a mortgage. So if I were to paint a picture for this, you've got when you somebody buys a house, they have to promise to pay it back, right? They borrow money, they're promising to pay it back. That's the note portion of it. So now they can buy this house, but in addition to signing the note, which is the IOU, they're also saying, look, if I don't pay you back, you have the right to foreclose, okay? That's where it's called the security instrument. It's right in the actual documentation. So that's what we're buying, not buying the house. They own the house. They have the equity in the house. Great, I've got the debt on the house. So I receive passive monthly income like a bank. Be your own bank, right? That's what money school is all about. Be your own bank. Here, you are the bank. They're making the payments to you. And if something happens on the property, toilets overflowing, roof is leaking, you don't call your bank, right? You call the handyman. You, you own the property. So same thing. We're not a landlord. We're the note owner. So we don't deal with the tenants. We don't deal with any management of the property, the maintenance of the property, and all the headaches that come with it. And look, nothing against owning rental property. It's a fine way to make money, but it comes at a cost. And I deal with a lot of landlords who just get, I'm done with it. I just can't do it anymore. I've got a property management in place, but I'm still getting phone calls every other day because of this, that, and the other, and I have to make decisions. And then I get, you know, then I have to replace a roof, or then I got a water heater that blew out, and I get all these unexpected expenses done with it. You know, I say, convert those tenants over to owners. You become the bank. Now you don't get those phone calls because you don't own the property. They do. You're just on the bank. So that's truly being your own bank here. Now, because of the structure of this investment, you're allowed to utilize any tax sheltered account. So above and beyond your, 
your uh, infinite banking uh, money through the insurance policies, you can use IRAs, 401ks, covered out accounts, your own account, you know, uh, uh, any of that, your own investment capital, all of those things are wide open for this um, investment. So our intermediary in this business is what's called a servicing company. Because like a good bank, we don't want to deal directly with the borrower we want somebody else to, to deal with that. If they're late, you send them a letter, you make the phone calls, you do all that sort of stuff. So the servicing companies do that and they do that for a small fee. How small? 15 to $30 per month, okay? Depending upon if you're having it escrowed uh, or not. So the servicing company collects the money. Let's say it's $830 a month and your servicing fee is 30 bucks. Okay, 830 comes in, they take out their 30, they hold the escrow and all those other things. They do all the tax accounting. They do all of that for that. And then they send you your 800 bucks every month. That's it. Okay. So now that you understand the relationship, let me just show you some of the things on recent deals that people are doing. Property value in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, again, I know we have people from all over the U.S. on this. And some of these property values are going to be shocking to you. But look at the house that you can get in Cleveland, Ohio for $34,500. Quite different than what you could get in uh, California, New York, you know, th those sorts of things, right? So very affordable, working class neighborhoods. This note, uh, they bought for um, $20,000. So the property was worth Thirty-four. They paid under twenty grand for the note. They're making fifteen point two three percent annualized return, being paid on a monthly basis, less than thirty days of being in the business. Here's another one: twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars was the purchase price for the note. In return, they're getting one hundred sixty-three payments of three hundred forty-four dollars and fifty-nine percent. That's sixteen percent annualized return. Back by a house that's worth uh, thirty-eight thousand five hundred bucks. Uh, here's another one. Property value, $94,000. Had a $30,000 unpaid balance of the loan. Bought it for $25,000 on a non-performing note. And what they did was a trial loan modification to get this loan working again. The technique here, buy a non-performing loan very inexpensively, and then turn around and get that loan re-performing on a trial mod basis. And then you can turn around and sell that note or keep uh, keep that note. So again, I could show you example after example after example here. Let me get into a little bit more detail uh, from you. So this is a new one. You can see that this one was just listed in, in August. So a very new, new deal that I'm showing you uh, here. And we get all this information. You know, what's the story? What are the, some, give us some comments on the, on this note. Uh, what, what, what's this, what's this all about? And, and then we look at the numbers and then I'll show you some of the paperwork that, that we look at. So we're looking at what's the property worth. Uh, in this case, the property's worth $130,000. They're asking $36,500 for a note with a balance of $46,200. Now, without knowing anything about the business and the calculations that we do, I would think your brain would go like, okay, first of all, it's safe because I'd only be in it for 36,000. It's backed by $130,000 property. I'm getting it at a discount because they owe 46,000. I'm paying essentially 36,000 for that. So I'm getting a $10,000 discount uh, on that. And some of you already may have looked ahead and said, but wait a minute, it's at 0% interest. That doesn't mean I'm getting 0% interest. The interest that is here is what's being paid. That's the coupon rate from the borrower. So the borrower is at 0% interest, but remember, we're buying it at a discount. We're trading $36,500 today to receive $800 a month for 57.75 months. So we're building our return, we're building our yield within our purchase price uh, here. So information that we get here, we start to analyze, we start to look at some numbers, pretty simple math, uh, and then we start looking at the paperwork. Right. So instead of me driving around looking at houses and trying to figure out how much it's going to cost me to rehab it, for example, which all of you would do if you're buying real estate, I'm looking at the paperwork. That's what I have to look at. Okay. So I'm looking at the promissory note. Here's what they borrowed. Right. Um, I'm looking at the uh, uh, financing information on it, right? I'm looking at the security uh, instrument that, that's on here. I want to see proof that they're making these payments. Now, this was a seller finance deal. Um, so their proof was simply showing me deposits from their account. Um, I want to see a paperwork 
on what type of asset this is, was it recorded, has it been traded before? So I looked at all of that information. We can see this is a deed of trust. I can verify all the information on the contract. We ended up getting a, a BPO, a broker's price opinion on the property. We searched on the internet. We looked at about what the value was, but we had somebody local for less than, it's like 75 bucks, 100 bucks. They go out there and give us a real estate agent, a broker's price opinion. You can see the actual broker's price opinion uh, right, right there. So we can call it $150,000. We did get a title report. Even though we looked at the paperwork online, ordered a title report, you can see that that uh, report was done in July of 2024. And uh, no surprises there because we had already gone together. This is a client of mine uh, that I mentor, already gone together online and looked up all this public information. So there are no surprises here at all. Let's look at the numbers. Property's worth 155. His investment was 32 grand. Safe? Yeah. Does he have risk? What could possibly go wrong? They stop paying. If they stop paying, worst, worst, worst case scenario is what? The property gets foreclosed upon. Right. Now, they'd never let it go to foreclosure, right? They'd sell it if they had to, sell it for $140,000 to quick sell it, pay you off thirty two dollars or actually, sorry, pay you off what the unpaid balance is, $42-something thousand dollars, right? And walk away with their equity, of course, okay? So risk, we've handled. What about the loan discount? So remember, $46,000 is what the balance is. We're paying 32 actually. So we negotiated down from that 36 price. We got it down to 32,000 bucks, by the way. Um, so bonus yield, yes. There's a big upside if they pay this uh, pay this thing off early. Big upside if you uh, have to take the property back. Big upside if they refinance on this. They were not going to refinance because it's at 0% for them. But for us, uh, what kind of yield... Uh, is he making on that? Well, $32,800 a month for 58 months. If you run that through a financial calculator, his return is going to be 30% per year. Safety, risk, bonus yield, 30%. You liking it so far? I hope so. There's a lot of different ways to, to find these, these deals. Um, there's uh, as far as MLS, yeah, there's uh, this is a, these are all screenshots from a company called uh, Paperstack. I know, I train the guys in the business. Their office is literally four miles down down the road, um, but I trained them in the business about twelve years ago. And then there's different vendor sources that you go to. There's preferred ones that I know. I've I've been doing this for thirty years, so I have relationships with them. A lot of these companies will come to me first. Uh, with inventory before they put it anywhere else, including uh, the, this platform, because they know that I train people at a high level, and 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 uh, you know they're not. I don't have just tire kickers. I have investors. I have people who are ready to go and start doing these things. They just need the guidance for me to walk them uh, walk them through. So here's another one for you. Again, going to look pretty pretty similar here. Uh, twenty seven thousand is the investment. They owe thirty one thousand. Um, the the interesting thing on this one was, and this was done by uh, someone also from, from Money School, the property values were coming in crazy. It's one of those neighborhoods where there's good homes and bad homes. It's in a transition. So the BPOs were saying the range is $20,000 to $75,000 in property value. Unpaid balance in this one is basically $32,000. Uh, and they're asking twenty seven. dollars But twenty seven, dollars if the property's worth thirty. dollars that's that's not safe enough. If it's worth 75, we're good. The problem was we couldn't nail down a good value in this in this neighborhood. So what I told uh, uh, this client of, of mine, happens to be uh, Alvin's his name, what I told the client was, here's what we need to do. We have to get a little creative on this one because I think you're taking on too much risk to pay 27 when it might be worth, you know, $35,000, something, something like that. We can't do that. So what I said is, if you bought it at that, yes, you're making a yield. You're making 13.6%, which is a good yield, but you're taking on too much risk because if the loan goes bad and this house is worth 35,000, let's say to, 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 to pick a number there, if the house is worth 35,000, great. If they're paying, you're making 13.6. If they stop and you have to foreclose, now you're not making anything. Because by the time you pay for foreclosure costs and everything else, $35,000 home and it needs work, what are you going to do? You've taken on too much risk. That's why you can't just be a yield hunter in any business and just go, oh, look at the yield I'm getting. Well, what's your risk? You know, let's have risk first, then, then yield. So what I told him was, here's what you want to do. What these represent are income streams over time. In fact, this one's 132 months. Hang with me here. 
I said, why don't you do this? Make them an offer where you're not buying all 132 payments right now for $27,000. Let's structure this a little bit different here. Pay them the 27, but here's how we're going to do it. We'll give you $15,000 now to buy the next 50 payments, okay? Then I said, get an option to buy the remaining payments, okay? So in other words, there's a total of 132 payments. He's buying the first 50 for $15,000, okay? What did that effectively do? Dramatically reduced his risk, okay? He's not putting out 27,000. Now he's putting out 15,000 and he's just buying 50 of these payments and his yield is the same. Okay. So he's making 13.7% doing it this way, but his risk is obviously much lower. Okay. The portion here with the option brings him into what I call a multi-stage buyout. Okay. So he did get that offer accepted, uh, by the way, and is currently receiving those payments. And then at the end of the 50th month, then he's got the option to buy somebody, what is it, 80, 80 months? He's got the option to buy the other 80 payments at a yield that's even higher than the 13%. Think about that. If he chooses not to buy those 80 payments 50 months down the road, he could do what? He has the right to buy them. He could sell those to somebody else. Just make the money that way. Pretty smart, right? So multi-stage buyout, we used to negotiate, uh, especially useful when people don't want to budge on, on prices and when they're using seller financed uh, notes, lowers our risk, increase our yield. Here's another one. So estimated value, 100 grand, sold it for seller financing in 2022. They took $4,500 down. Uh, they sold it for 69,000 bucks. There's all the paperwork. Because again, we look at the paperwork. Here's the loan. Here's how they amortized it. Here's the interest rate. Here's what the monthly payments are. Here's what happens if they're late. All of those details we know. We don't have to drive anywhere. We're looking at stuff online, right? So we can do it from, from anywhere. The investor uh, bought the property cheap through tax sale. This is probably more history than you, than you need on, on this one. Bottom line is they were asking $55,000 for, for this loan. All right, so risk-wise, we're, we're good. Uh, we're getting a good discount on this. Eight payments have been made, so there were 112 payments remaining. But again, I said, why don't we do this on a multi-stage buyout? And this is right from a financial calculator, uh, by the way. So I said, why don't we do this for $55,000, if you buy all 112 payments of 765.64 per month, you're going to be making 10.28% yield, which again, is not horrible, okay? But maybe because it's seller finance, let's negotiate a little bit here. Let's get a little bit more creative. Why don't we do this? Why don't we offer them a 35.240 now to receive 64 payments? And then we'll pay them 19760 after you receive the 64 payments. So in the 65th month, we'll pay them $19,760 to receive the remaining 47 payments. So if you run those numbers, we're giving them the $55,000, right? We're giving them more than actually what they're asking for, $35,000 and, and roughly $20,000, bucks. But look at our returns. Because we're only putting out some money now, some money later, we're making 13%, my client's making, I should say. I, I feel like I'm wor I, I work with them so closely, I often say, say we. I, I don't have any money invested in this. I'm not making money off this. My client is, just want to clarify, uh, clarify that. But this is how I work with people. So, so for the next five years, right, 64 months, he's making 13% on his money. But then look what happens here. He's got the right to buy 47 payments for only 20 grand and he's making 34% interest down the road in the future. Multi-stage uh, buyout. So this is just a matter, if this math looks complicated to you, this is a pretty simple thing. Once I lay it out and show you, here's present value. This is the interest rate per year. Here's the present value now and the, the interest rate. I can show you how to do that really quickly. So where money is made on this technique, is understanding a concept that's known as, as a partial, okay? And partials give you leverage, right? And this is where there's a, uh, there's a guy who, uh,
I, I showed a young a, a young guy uh, in, in this business how to take his IRA, and now he's built it up. It's been probably ten years. He's built it up to two million dollars and started with a very very small account, and it's using the power of leverage. And that's again one of the things that wealthy people do is they leverage things, but in a different way, not taking on a lot of debt, but controlling things. So this is a technique that I'll show you. A lot of people utilize with their IRA or 401k because the IRS in the United States, and by the way, in Canada, I just happened to glance over and see that question. Canadians do it in the United States because the Canadian banking system is different uh, when it comes to mortgages. But I do have Canadians that I train that are doing it in the US. They use their IRAs, 401ks, and those type of accounts to leverage it because then they can make these gains and not pay any taxes on them. Again, using wealth, uh, wealthy uh, people type of uh, uh, techniques, wealthy investor techniques. So let me give you an example of, of that. And I'll just switch over here and show you in, in real time uh, how this kind of thing works. So let's say that there's a $150,000 property, whatever, and they owe $100,000. And there's 360 payments. I can change the payments and everything else, but I'm going to use a nice simple example for everybody. $100,000 unpaid balance, 360 payments. It's written at 9%. Interest payments are 804.62. That's the current situation of the note. Okay. You negotiate to buy that at a discount for $70,000. Okay. $70,000, you're buying all payments and your yield's about 13% on that. Okay. Right now, things are trading around, as, as you've seen examples, right? Anywhere from 10 upwards of 14%, you know, on, on a broader scale. Um, so that's right in there in line with what we're looking at on these deals. Okay, so you've got the right to buy this $100,000 note, which represents 360 payments of 804.62 for $70,000. But let's say you don't have the $70,000, but you do have another investor who does. So you got the deal. This is where you control, uh, control the deal here. You negotiate it and you need $70,000 for the closing. But let's say your investor is going to put in $69,900. Now, for that, you're going to give them a nice return of 9%. So you're going to give them 142 payments. Okay. So think about this. You've got the right to buy this for $70,000. You need $70,000 at the closing table. You go to an investor, say, I got a great opportunity for you. You can invest $69,900. It's backed by a hundred and uh, whatever, $30,000 house, whatever I said. Um, and you'll be making a 9% return annually. And they go, great. Okay. So with that, there you'll notice only getting a portion of these payments. If we think of these payments as linear, 360 of them, you're just carving off 142 and giving it to them. They're still making a good return. They're still safe. Okay. So you're going to put in $100. Okay, because you need 70,000 at the closing. Maybe your IRA does, maybe your kid's IRA does. Okay, or you write it out of your checking account, whatever. Okay, so now what happens down the road? So what we have are these entitlement schedules. So the line in black here represents this original loan, the amortization schedule, the payoff at any point in time. The green represents where you bought it and the red represents where you sold that to a partial investor. So what this showing is on the bottom, that's how many payments this other investor is going to receive, okay? So after they receive their 142nd payment, then the loan comes back to you. So your $100 would be getting payment number 143 to 360, okay? So 360 minus 142 leaves you with 218 payments of $804.62, which means your $100 is going to get back $175,407. Now, you have to wait for it, okay? But that's what your IRA and everything's all about. That's why it's a perfect strategy for an IRA. But what if it pays off early? What if it pays off in 60 months? We'll go five years. It doesn't really matter. 
the different the payoff here you can see is ninety five thousand eight hundred eighty dollars. That's what the bar. Let's say they sell their house five years. They owe ninety five thousand eight hundred eighty. Now your investor in red has an entitlement, so they get forty nine thousand. We'll make it make that fifty thousand just for easy math. You get your IRA or your hundred dollars, whatever gets the difference between ninety five thousand and. 50,000. So you're getting $45,000 if it pays off in five years. And I can make that number anything. Okay. It's just always going to be the difference between the two. This goes 10 years. The payoff is still because of the amortization. The payoff in 10 years is still $90,000. But now the entitlement for the other investor is only $16,000. So now you're making 73 grand on that $100 investment. Now, the reason I keep saying $100, by the way, is because the IRS says the minimum allowable investment for IRA or 401k or tax shelter account is 100 bucks, okay? The reality is, do you even have to put anything in? Could you, couldn't you do this as a nothing down deal, just have another investor buy it? Sure, you could. And then you have no money uh, in, in the deal at all. You know, maybe you don't want to do it that way. Maybe you have an investor, you say, hey, you know, uh, uh, give me uh, give me fifty thousand because maybe you got twenty grand that you want to invest from your your uh, insurance policy. You got twenty grand. You need another fifty. Well, have them fifty run the numbers again and say now in this case I just got to give them uh, eighty four payments. That's what they'll be entitled to. Okay, so you put in twenty grand, they put in fifty grand. Okay, you're getting so three sixty minus the eighty four payments that they're receiving. You're getting two hundred and seventy six payments of 80462. It's another $222,000 on a $20,000 investment, or once again, pays off early. Okay. In a case like that, I'd have to change that. And we'd be okay with that too. Pays off in 60 months, pay off is 96,000. You owe them 17. You keep the difference. That's the power of leverage. That's why wealthy people are, are in this arena here. All right. If the economy goes bad, let's talk about that real quick. Worst case scenario, are you prepared? No businesses. We'll have more opportunity. So housing debt, all that sort of stuff going up. Banks are in trouble. I know Chris spends a lot of time uh, on this, so I'm not going to beat these charts up here. But there's a lot of delinquencies, and they're being held back by the government. Um, but eventually, the government's going to put this back on the banks. And that's why banks, there's 63 lenders right now. And you can see, this is a recent article, 63 lenders right now that are at brink of insolvency. Okay, So it's the cracks are there. And when this thing breaks, they're going to start to sell all these non-performing loans. Okay. Um, so let me show you what we do. Just did this one too. $225,000 property. This is up in Maine. Uh, $95,000 balance, non-performing note. So they've stopped making their payments. Their legal balance has grown. So the unpaid balance is 95, but because of all the missed and late payments, the legal payoff is 195 grand, $195,000 on a rearage account. So they roughly have $100,000 in, in a rearage account with a balance of 95,000 on, on top of it. So bought the note for $86,000, had them apply for the homeowner financial assistant program in Maine. They paid $50,000 to help this person stay in their home and avoid foreclosure. You paid 86 for the note. You got $50,000 back. And that takes about 90 days, 60 to 90 days, by the way. So now you're in this thing for $36,000 and they still owe you the $95,000 on the note. That's the kind of thing that we'll be doing if the economy takes a tank. And there's going to be scenarios where you might've paid 30 grand for this note and you got 50 grand back and you still own the note. Okay, those, that's going to happen. Bankruptcies don't bother us. We love bankruptcies because it's free, free money. With bankruptcies, we get two cash flows for the price of one. I'll just break it down. This one had a seventy-seven thousand dollar mortgage, twenty-six thousand dollar arrearage account. Purchased the whole thing for thirty-four grand. They bought this note for thirty-four grand. Got this one for free. We like bankruptcy. Bankruptcies are going up. If they continue to go up, this is what we're going to be doing. Bought the note for thirty-four. $77,000 balance, $26,000 account for free. First year, got back $7,600 on the reperforming note, got back $13,000 on the arrearage account. That's a 60% return, folks, 6-0, okay? The second year, balance goes down to 71. You've already gonna hit break even at this point in time. Now your return is infinite because you have no money in it and you still have a $71,000 loan, okay? So I mentioned I'd show you an opportunity here 
and I've seen some comments already asking about this um, in the uh, in the Q and A. Where did my Q and A go? There it is. I've already seen some people asking uh, about this, and uh, so let me spend some time on this. And we don't always show you opportunities like this on the on the Wednesday call, but you're gonna like this. Uh, many of you, I believe. So when you start a business, there's a startup cost. When you start an investment, there's a startup cost uh, to that. Now that startup cost, if you're buying a franchise, it could be. $50,000 could be a uh, million dollars, depending upon the, the franchise. And what are you getting? You're getting a system that that works uh, uh, with that. There's a lot of things that you can start, like investing in real estate, where you don't really have a business startup a cost, but you're probably going to pay some cost in trial and error. You know, let's let's face it. Let's just be very, very candid uh, here. So imagine an opportunity where you could start investing in a new business, new investment with an industry expert working directly with you? How can an industry expert work directly with you? Through the same format. We're on Zoom right now. Imagine if you and I were looking at these inventory sources together, looking at deals together, going through paper, all the paperwork together, sharing a screen, taking you through the whole thing. Is there anything that I showed you you couldn't do? Of course not. Because I'm going to be there right with you every step along the way. Where do we get the inventory? Well, it depends. What are you looking for? Let's talk about your goals. Let's put it together a plan. Let's start looking at these things. Schedule. Well, how often can I schedule? Unlimited. When you're taking on a mentor, they should be available to you. And I am. Okay. And you can book unlimited amount of sessions with me. So do I work with per people personally? I absolutely do on a very, very high level. And I've worked with many, many people. So here's my email. Here's my scheduler. Put those in your, in your notes or take a quick screenshot of, of that. Cause I do want to outline some more things for you and set up a call. You know, you want to have an extended conversation with it. There's no cost to that. I'm willing to just get on the phone and talk with you and see if this is right for you and see if I'm the right person for you. Uh, and there's my uh, other email address. So you've got that, that information, but I have solutions really for everybody. If you're just looking for education, kind of kicking it around a little bit, I have a program uh, for that. It's less than 800 bucks. Okay. Very extensive. 20 hours goes into every detail. Mentorship is really what people need if you're going to do this business, because again, you want somebody who's there to work with you on a regular basis not focused on them, but focused on you and what you want to accomplish in the business. And that's exactly the relationship that I have built. And because of technology like Zoom, it's great because we can be anywhere or on the computer together going through every step. The partnership is a whole different level, uh, not for every everyone, uh, but if you want me to essentially find deals and financially partnership in there, I do have that option for you uh, as, as well. So if I broke it down a little bit, I've got an extensive course. I've got my Real Estate Without Renters course, which is 20 hours. It's very detailed, but entertaining. It's easy to follow like this presentation was. If you li like my format and style of teaching, it's it's that but going into every aspect of the business. It's the best out there. Um, that is your core educational library. I put together some more advanced techniques for non-performing notes, uh, master classes on there. That's all available online 24 seven, uh, by the way, you get a username and password. My notes A to Z series, I basically go through a deal. I show you how I talk back and forth with the, with the sellers of the note, take you all the way through a transaction. So you get that 30,000 foot view of what it looks like. My due diligence courses uh, go really, really deep on the um, uh, non-performing uh, side, goes through all of the exit strategies, entry strategies, much like real estate. How do we get in? How do we get out? Um, my consulting, I went with a triple tier approach, as I call it. Quick questions, email me. I do email support seven days a week. Why seven days a week? Because, well, like most people, my cell phone is right here with me. Get my email. You might be looking at something on the weekend. You just need a quick, hey, Kevin, how did that work? How did you show those numbers again? Boom, I get right back to you on the, on the, uh, on the emails. And it's important because there's frustration if you're looking at notes on your on your own on a Saturday or Sunday and you run into a snag and you're kind of stuck. You're like, man, I really want to look at notes today, but I can't remember what that process was. Shoot me an email and I will get back to you. Uh, the triple tier also, it's all 
group, uh, no, so, sorry, the group sessions I do every other Wednesday allow me to give you continuing updates on the industry, new techniques, new strategies, new government funds, whatever it is, new available inventory. I've got people come to me with inventory because they know that my people are trained well. It's all fully recorded on those. So I do have a group Zoom that I do, but more importantly, it's a one-on-one. -on -one right? One-on-one -on -one with you. I'm your personal consultant. You schedule it. I give you a Calendly link five days a week. We talk about what you want to do. They're up to an hour. And as I said, they're absolutely unlimited. You want to schedule once a week? Schedule once a week. Because when you're going through a deal, you might get paperwork on something. We have to review it. If I made it where you can only meet with me once a week, it's not going to work. You know, you're going to be like, I got to make a decision tomorrow. Schedule them whenever you need to schedule those and we'll make it work. It's access to special inventory, as I said, all of my spreadsheets, everybody loves that spreadsheet, all of my spreadsheets, all of my preferred vendors, all of everybody is available to you as, as well. And like I said, when it comes to note investing, real estate investing, anything else you're doing, price is what you pay, value is what you get. The value of having an industry expert working with you, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, you put a value, uh, uh, it's got to be easily that because that's what I end up working with with people on. And I've got people who have developed now their own funds and they, they manage 20, 30, $40 million funds. So it can be up to that value. The price, very simple. Whoops, 30, you guys, it's different. Sorry, that should be changed. That 39, okay, for, for Chris's uh, group. So 3,900 uh, is the price on that. If you... Uh, if you have a question, well, will Kevin carry a note on the 3,900? Uh, I will. In other words, if you want to finance it, there's an option for that as well. Um, and uh, you'll pay a little bit more on that, but it's like $700 uh, a month, all the same benefits. If you want to learn more about those programs, you can scan that or you can copy in that, that URL uh, as well. Kevin, I put in the chat too that you'll be at our... Um at our in-person event for Private Money Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, November 8th and 9th. So if you are looking to meet up with, you know, some people that might even be on this webinar and Kevin and other people in our community, that's a good place to at least get some face-to-face, -face, um, you know, action and be able to talk that much further. Yeah. Um, so I put that in the chat as well as your booking and your email. Okay, excellent. I'm just, uh, let's see, other questions. Frank, I don't understand the question. What happens if the dollar goes, oh, oh uh, maybe you're talking crypto or or something like that. I think Chris has some ideas that that's not going to happen, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 that would get into the whole banking system. So there, there'd be a question for that, but I, I hadn't thought, thought, about, uh, thought about that one there. I uh, gotcha. Any other questions? Now's your chance to do it. We got a couple more minutes, so I'll, I'll hang in there with you. And I wasn't able to watch the chat, obviously, uh, Shauna, so you were doing no, that. No, it was good. It was good. And everybody has your links. And then um, I'm just going to put the, you know, the kind of our Infinite Banking 101 type of video in there, too, if anybody wants to catch up on some Infinite Banking stuff before next week. Otherwise, yeah, please book a call with Kevin. And thank you, Kevin, so much for your time today. Oh, you're most you're most welcome. Oh, OK. You already mentioned that. I was just looking back. You uh, were supposed to mention uh, the money tank, but you already got that. Beautiful. Yep, November. <laughs> Perfect. Which I will see you there, Kevin. So thank oh, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I already uh, booked and ready to ready to go. So I love doing the live events, everybody. If you haven't been to a live event in a while, it, it's just different. It really is. I mean, you get the chance to really meet everybody. And, uh, you know, the networking is is so good. You can start to really develop relationships. And that's that's so important. Look, I, I love Zoom like everybody else. It, I used to travel quite a bit. And uh, it's nice to be able to work at home and work and, and connect with people. But I'm just telling you at a, at a different level, um, just coming out live, you know. So if, if it's been a while since you've been to an event, uh, get out there. And I think you'll really in, enjoy the people, every event I've been been to with um, with Chris and his his team has just been just been not only fun, informative, but uh, really uh, rewarding and, and just a great group. So yeah, definitely go out to those uh, events. And uh, when you're out there, say hello. Uh, wow. Oh, we got a um, bunch more questions here. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah, the question: thirty nine hundred mentorship program for what duration? Thanks for pointing that out. That's uh, that's on me. I should have mentioned that. So that's a one time fee that covers everything for six months. And after six months, it just goes to $75 a month to maintain the services. Okay. Thanks for pointing that out. So 3,900 one time covers everything for six months. 
uh, after six months to maintain the services, which is the one-on-one -on -one consulting and the email support. That just goes to $75 a month for as long as you want to be in the program, just month to month. Thanks for that. Is this for someone completely new? You know, it, it really, it, it's both. And I, what I didn't mention, for example, on one of these case studies, the first one I, I showed you, I think it was, no, it wasn't the first one. It was, just to go back to my screen real quick here. So this one I showed you, this deal in, in uh, Endomorph, Texas, this was somebody who was working with me literally for six days. Okay. So, but they had taken some other courses in the node industry. They just weren't getting results because there wasn't that, that connection. So they had some experience. He told me he's ready to go. Within six days, I found this deal for him uh, and he closed on it um, probably a total within 30, within 30 days. So he came with some experience. Um, this one here that I showed you on the, the multi-stage and stuff, zero experience. Didn't know anything uh, about the business at all. This one, no experience at all and found it within, within 30 days. So sometimes when you come into, again, these alternative investments, coming with a clean slate, it's not a bad thing. What I found is, and I was just talking with somebody about this, I had a client who also had gone through other courses, never bought anything. And his attitude was, I know how to find deals. I just don't know how to do that next level of due diligence. And that's why I'm signing up with you. Well, <clears throat> after, I don't know, three, four weeks, he set up a call with me. He goes, I'm just not finding anything. You know, these sources are just, there's nothing there. I'm like, okay, we're closing deals every week. I said, here's what we need to do. Let's get on Zoom and I'm going to show you how I go through and look at these. So let's get away from whatever system you've been taught and let's, let me show you how I do it. And sure enough, he's like, oh, I was doing it. It's like, yeah, exactly. I got to break you of some of those old habits and what you what you learn and show you the right way uh, to do it. So it's really for all all ranges on there. Good, uh, good question. Any tax advantages to note investing? The only tax situation would be through IRAs and 401k. So your tax sheltered accounts would be the only tax benefits. We don't get and business deductions. I mean, if you have business costs and, and you know, paying me, for example, as a consultant in your business, that is a business deduction. So we have all the standard business deductions that one would have, uh, but we don't have tax advantages like depreciation on real estate because, well, we don't have, um, you know, we have the debt. We don't have the equity ownership on there, but you can buy them tax-free. No, you do not need to be accredited at all uh, for this. It's just a private individual, a private capital buying a private asset from another private company or private uh, individual. So you do not need to be accredited at all. Your custom domain is in the chat. iCloud, uh, either one. The iCloud account is uh, fine if you're if you're emailing me. If you're uh, the other one, Kevin at KevinShortel.com, they all go to the same uh, same place. Yeah. So you're good there. And of course, you got the scheduler there too. Great. All right. Unless there's anything in chat, uh, Shauna, I think we've got all the questions answered now. And Ryan Green, thank you so much. Oh, you're most welcome. And thanks, everybody. Um, hope you really in, enjoyed that. Hope you all show up in uh, in Charlotte. And uh, look forward to Chris on the next Wednesday uh, session as well to get more on that uh, infinite banking uh, uh, concept. And then uh, you'll have that, that money to do all these uh, alternative investments. So thanks again, everybody. Look forward to talking to you again soon. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them, but I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.